Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ascendance After Show. I am Sam. And I'm Josh. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that the um, first time, so I wasn't no, we ready didn't. for that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, Ascendance Season 5, Episode 3. And we have two very special guests here with us today. Um, we have Mike and we have Duke. How is everybody today? Great. <laughs> the, the, the pause to be like, we're all on Zoom, so I can't quite be like, who's talking first? <laughs> yeah. I'm also doing great. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Um, this is so much fun. I'm so excited to be Thank about you, Duke, week. for yeah. uh, giving us a home here on the Lost at Sea. Mm. Mm. Yes, we're very excited. You guys are, yeah. So Sorry, welcome. Go ahead. So welcome. You guys are so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, a bunch well, of amateurs over here. We're just like winging it. We're, but it's all good. We'll we're work gonna have the fun. Out for sure, for sure. We had a lot of fun talking with Tim um, in about episode one and two, and I know we had a great time the other week um, doing like a rewatch. And so that's sort of what spawned this idea when we were all back together. Because I know Sam and I really loved hanging out and chatting with the cast again because it was just such a fun group of people to be with. Um, on on location and filming and hanging out and all that good stuff. So we're excited to to chat uh, some episode three um, today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what we talked about this a little bit with Tim, but what brought us what brought this about, um, like Josh mentioned, was us kind of having just an impromptu watch party. We were all on Zoom. And when the episode was over, we were just talking about, you know, other things that didn't necessarily make it make the edit um, or things that just happen, like when cameras aren't around or, you know, how how people felt like going into the game, um, stuff that like before even getting like on the property um and so you know we're kind of just here to have an open discussion um anything anything that you found interesting or that you want to talk about like please feel free um it's a little bit more of an open forum discussion um but of course centering around like what happened during the time of episode three um but yeah with that like we could just kind of just get right into it um we open up the episode with uh, basically the wind uh, wrecking our day. Um, <laughs> but we do have like uh, one of the captain winners here with us, uh, Josh. How the heck did you do that? That was so hard. <laughs> It was crazy hard. I remember Oakley and I, I, I remember distinctly when we got paired up because I knew Oakley sort of was a target in the first round because of the pendant. People sort of were like a little weary of Oakley. And I was like, oh, this might be a great chance to like throw the challenge. And so I asked Oakley, I was like, hey, what do you want to do? Do you want to win it? Do you want to throw it? And he looked me down and he's like, Josh, we're winning this challenge. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to, I felt like I couldn't throw it on him at that point. And then with the wind, I probably could have very easily hidden the fact that I was throwing it if I chose to do that. But we sort of came up with a strategy of like trying to keep the, the pieces of pipe like as close to our body as we could um, to try to see if we could block the wind as much as possible. And, um, you know, it just kind of, we had some very, very close saves of like almost dropping it. And we did drop it a lot. You can see it in the episode. We drop it a whole bunch of times, but um, no, I don't know. We just, we just kind of put our heads down and didn't, I, I don't remember anybody else being at that challenge. I remember me and Oakley being there and I don't remember what anybody else was doing. Cause we Who just- was the referee? Do you remember them? Jake uh, Stevens, Jake. I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we just focused. We were like, we, we got to do this. And then when we got to the end, uh, it just felt so cool. And so, so I was so excited to win. <laughs> Can't relate. I didn't make it to the bucket once. Me and Dave uh, flopped. <laughs> um, Duke, you, um, who are you paired up with? I was paired up with Lance. For with this, Lance. For okay, this that's right. So like you and Lance almost won. I think you were just one ball behind uh, Josh yes. and Oakley. I think so. Um, we were, we were, what was we were your technique? Football. How did you do that? <laughs> um, we, I mean, definitely a learning curve. I think everybody went through a learning curve on this one. Um, but we, my thing was we should definitely try to block the wind with our bodies. So be like facing 
with it, like the thing this way, have the wind towards our back. Um, and I think that helped us, um, but I mean, we just couldn't clutch it in the end. Josh and Oakley were just too fast. I didn't even see them going for it at, for the for the, the long basket. It was it was out of nowhere. Especially because every time you dropped, you had to reset every every pathway, so it was really hard to tell who was ahead or not. We had I remember hearing callouts for purple team two baskets, whatever color each of us were three baskets. Like that was the only indicator you knew as to who was where throughout it. And even then that's vague because it's not like we were memorized the colors of the people going into it. Um, I want to back up just slightly because yeah. like when we do off camera, we do a color draw to figure out who was paired with who. And I remember reaching to a bucket for a ball and closing it and not really knowing why and thinking we're playing rock suddenly. Like, or um, I didn't watch Ascendant season one, I'm sorry, but I know that Michael Davis was screwed over because of a ball draw in that. So I was like thinking about like, oh no, is this what's happening? Some version of this, they can't possibly. Um, but then like I pull Gluck and I think like if it would have been nearly any other player, probably like, or, or Oakley, I would have turned to them and been like, do you want to throw this? Because I think a lot of us were otherwise in the middle otherwise. But um, but with Gluck having just come off of round one receiving votes, he was, I, I could tell without even asking, he wanted to go for this one, like full tilt. So <laughs> our strategy going into it was to stay low to the ground in hopes that the wind was mostly going to be hitting the, like, higher than us. And that did seem to be what was going on in terms of, like, whenever the balls would, at least from my experience, when the balls would go up the pipe when we were holding it up like this, it tended to be if I was like not kneeling down. Um, but experience could vary. The wind was random and all over the place. I felt like we were giving it a big fight. I felt like we were pretty close behind Josh and Oakley throughout it, but it, it's hard to tell at the same time, like how good. But I, I just wanted to like, that was like the first field challenge, a big, deal to me was to get at least one challenge physically running in the field behind the house. That was extremely important to get at least something like that. So that was important to get that checked off. And that like gave me a little bit of relief going into round two. It was like, okay, because round one, we were blindfolded. It was so effing cold and like couldn't quite be physical in that. So at least mm -hmm. round two, there was a little bit of that, even though we were like balancing the pipes through there. Mm -hmm. Am I misremembering it when I say that you and Gluck got the first ball out of anybody? I think so. Yeah. Um, I do believe that we were in the lead in terms of the goals. Um, just you you and Oakley really caught up fast as well and then surpassed, which is great. Mm -hmm. I was reviewing some of the episode footage and I noticed that a lot of people were standing like face to face going up the field, whereas Oakley and I were both we were side by side, so we were like shoulder to shoulder, and I it just I don't know if that made a difference, but it was interesting to see some of the different strategies that people had to try to to get the mission accomplished. I also just was so amused by like when we've talked off camera, obviously to our friends who played that challenge, the different viewpoints. Uh, like Charlie straight up was not trying to win it, but German was. Sky and Bergen were milking it. <laughs> And knew they weren't going to win and so I, I loved how there was footage of them just like tumbling when a ball <laughs> fell down when yeah I, I... bergen did a full like somersault <laughs> duke you did one too there's or a, okay maybe that's the one i'm thinking yeah. of I did. duke your somersault it did, it did, never mind it didn't it didn't help us at all it did not help <laughs> us. Was like, the wind was it looked really strong. good that's what i was aiming for for the camera yeah, yeah. look good on the camera <laughs> Yeah, actually, I did. I kind of got a bit ahead of myself just jumping right into like this challenge because um, that's like what the episode opens with. But one thing that um, actually you and I, Mike, we were just chatting a little bit before this and you mentioned you had done um, quite a bit of like prep work going into the season. And so I, I, got, I just want to take it back there for a second. So do you if you want to uh share with us like what was what was your plan like going in like what did you do to prepare to come to ascendance so like way back in like may of 2023 i just got off my first live reality game i went on a uh, a trader style mini for the first time ever that uh jake sparts was hosting uh, and he was hosting it with um michael bruner from big brother 24 
And that was kind of why I was on that mini, to be blatantly honest. I wanted to meet Michael Bruner in some fashion. Um, and so playing traders seemed on brand for that. And I make it to like sixth place in that as a faithful. I was pretty happy with my placing there. And uh, Jake was just like, hey, you should totally go for Ascendance. Um, and another acquaintance, uh, Paul Drake, was also on season two with, with Jake. And he had also said, um, you should try out for Ascendance. So I had just watched some footage of people in season two running around the fields and Nicole constantly saying, in another challenge of running where everyone here hates running. So I got in my head that this was a running allergy, to be really honest about it. <laughs> like, I didn't think, I thought it'd be more like Survivor, because when you play a Survivor format game, you can, through ch challenges, make your way to jury. Um, and I did a one-day Survivor in New Jersey where I met Debbie. And largely, that's how I made jury, was my tribe skipped most of pre-jury. Um, there's two challenges. So I had thought going into Ascendance that if I just doubled down on like a running training plan uh, and I fought hard that, you know, maybe you only hit elimination once or twice and then you deal with it. And then I started actually watching season four that I had a few friends playing and a few of the friends, I remember um, I had met Michael Davis in August of 2023 and I was talking about Ascendance like it was the challenge at MTV. And then he goes, no, it's straight strategy. And I was like, <laughs> so then I start like actually watching a sentence and going, oh, you're going to go to elimination a lot. <laughs> like, even if you do decent in challenges, like round one, only only one team was safe. All 12 other people went to elimination <laughs> round one. So I was just like, all right, slight game plan change. <laughs> yeah. Still do the running, still do the puzzles, but also you might be a little up a creek because... A lot of people go to Ascendance, play orcs continuously, and know how to handle themselves in eliminations, in being on the block, um, and day to day. And I only have like, it, I only do live games, and they're expensive. You can only do like one or two a year. So, like, mm -hmm. there's limited, more limited experience. So, I was like, okay, if, if falling to elimination, do your best. It's okay, you're on vacation. <laughs> but otherwise, give it your all in challenges. So, there was a lot of running because I was hoping that we would get the tag challenge in seasons two, three, and four. That I like that that Taisha tumbled in. That I, I, I love. She's <laughs> not good at running, so like I insert clip here of Taisha tumbling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. Um, <laughs> sorry, like, just sorry, be ready sorry. To Do that and fight hard for your team to win that challenge. And um, season four, when Grace is running up and down the driveway, I was like, all right, get ready for that challenge. Um, but the challenges I knew I couldn't really practice for that I'd be terrified of for were Pass It On and the Hierarchy. And so when Pass It On comes up round two, which we'll get to later, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> no. Like, not this one. <laughs> Why this one? Fine, we're going to elimination, but like, let's just try. Um, but no, like I, I wanted to, because I, I, a lot of, I, even though this was a game that we're playing for a t-shirt and pride, like I have a lot of people who like this game. So I really wanted to like give it my all. So I, it was a part of my mindset for months from like the minute I got out of August learning what Ascendance was really about all the way to March. So I was like, we're going to just give it our best shot. It's okay if people show up knowing each other for years, just, just fight. Um, so like that was my mindset about it. And then no matter what, like the mountains were going to be beautiful. <laughs> oh, <at the> <laughs> no, that's true. More. Oh, that's so cool. I like, I, I love hearing like, like about that stuff. Cause I, it reminds me a little bit, um, well, in, in Big Brother Canada, Kevin Martin, one of the players, like he has like this Big Brother Bible. Um, and so like, you know, there's just so many different ways that you can approach like preparing yourself for this game. Like, um, and I don't know, I, I just love uh, when people can just go all in and just like, just do the most like that. I, it, that to me is like, I don't know. I, I think what I'm trying to say is unabashedly just like loving something or like just putting like you're all into it like i just love yeah. that. and nicole and papa so were cool. so yeah. great in the prod chat all the time mm -hmm. like i was trying to figure out like okay when can i be campy on the show because we're making a show so like when we were ta I, I talked about the walks with them for weeks i wanted to like at one point i considered bringing I, my first big brother lrg 
I won safety via a scepter that I won through winning a lip sync contest. So I thought about walking out with a scepter and a crown and a cape and just kind of removing all that and then coming out in just like a sweatshirt or something like that so I could look more like a Michael Davis. But like, um, I asked about throwing glitter. They were a hard pass on that because there wasn't gonna be a lot of time to clean up glitter. Um, so I ultimately went with like a very simple um, XOXO death because I wanted to, yeah. at, at my at a prior game, and I guess ascendancy when we get to that, I um, partly go out because I get overly defensive about someone else. And so I was thinking like, okay, at this game, anyone you meet Friday night can go tomorrow. Do not throw your game out for anyone you just met here. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I'll make friends and throw them out. Um, but uh, going into round two, having kind of did that to Tim in a way, because Tim and I bonded, in the very first game we played in the carnivals. So I really didn't yeah. want him to go, but I was trying to tell myself that whole round, like, do not defend him. Do not defend him. Let this vote happen and just survive. <laughs> and so when Tim reveals to all of us that we, um, I'm already a wreck um, at this point before the vote, because I feel like I'm betraying someone who I enjoyed meeting. And then uh, he reveals to us that he didn't have a vote. And I almost like start crying in the room in that moment. So my mental like positioning is already off kilter going into round two, because mm -hmm. I'm like half depressed. I think we slept for three hours because we stayed up to four in the morning and I got up at seven. Um, I got up at seven and I went uh, pendant hunting. I got out of bed because I was sleeping <laughs> in the closet on an air mattress. Uh, which is great because that means I didn't have to wake up anybody leaving the bedroom. I just needed to be quiet, creaking out because the main bedroom that I was in had um, Bergen, Oakley, and German sharing a bed. So I just kind of like snuck past them. I made a coffee and then I started like walking around looking at the mountains again, which were beautiful, but then going to the pool house. And because I wanted to do everything that Josh Duenas did in terms of like finding every place that he went hunting for pendants. So there was just a lot of thought that I was trying to put into this game um over the course so i was like studying a lot of episodes between two and four as to what the pendant sites were what kind of challenges would be coming up uh and and yeah just trying to like put as most as i could into it uh, so that that's really cool and so off like duke you have such a different like history and and like relationship to the show um what 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 was like what made you decide now is the time to like throw your hat in the ring like uh, and actually come on and and play the game that like you talk about um on your podcast yeah i mean um nicole mentioned that this might be the last season that you know ascendance is so um i was like you know i've never played an in-person live you know game so i was like if I'm going to play one, this is the one to do it. And this might be the last season. So I was like, you know, fuck it. Let's go for it. And um, I, I went for it. Uh, I did take definitely a different approach than Mike. I, I kind of, I've watched a lot of it before. So I didn't really need to prepare that much in terms of like getting up on the game just because I've interviewed almost everybody that's played. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish that I did do a little bit more cardio. So. I will say that I think Mike had the right idea for that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like heading into it was like, cause I played the online version and, and, you know, I'm really close with Michael Davis who's played twice. And so like, I kind of had the like lay of the land of like, I've talked to Michael at nauseum about ascendance and like his experiences there. So I was like, okay, I kind of know what I'm getting into, but I definitely should have been, I think a bit more prepared in terms of like, the physicality of some of the challenges and like just like no, like just being ready to get into it with some of that because like I definitely was thrown off by some of the challenges that we had to do especially you know in this first in the captain's challenge for this episode so it was like you, Mike you definitely had the right idea so future LRG players do the do the mic uh pre prep uh, prep work level kind of stuff so <laughs> I think we're I think we're so accustomed like you know the org and then I've made I played a lot uh, like online not as much like in person this is my first in-person game where the challenge like when you're in person is so much more physically taxing and uh 
as opposed to like online where you're just like balancing solo cups or something what whereas you know you're running a lot in this so it's like mm -hmm. maybe I mean, uh good. yeah it's a big difference like if you as i i have not done an org like you all have but i you're living your life normally you're sleeping in your own bed you're not potentially being woken up by other people in the house for any yeah. reason whatsoever. Like it, it changes everything about your mindset. When you're sick of, uh, of the people that you're playing with online, like you close your computer and you can take a breather. Like, like I'm sick of this shit. Like, uh, <laughs> let me, let me take a pause. But like, yeah, you absolutely like any like luxury or like comfort it is just kind of gone. Um, and to, to what you're saying too, Duke, like I remember, not that I remember, uh, I, I could see it on my face when we're um, after like the ball thing um, and running, just trying to make that work. My face was red and was red for like the rest of, you know, that whole thing. Cause I, I was dead. <laughs> it was hard. Uh, yeah. Is there um, my next question then, or the next thing that I, I guess that I want to know? We we talked a little bit about this la, um, like with Tim, but in the like in between times um, where you know we were at filming for the day, um, stuff that just doesn't get caught on camera. Is there anything that uh, like any conversations that you had? Um, or, or like anything like that, that you wanted to like talk about before we get into the uh, pass it on challenge. So many, honestly, like, yeah, uh, there's, I know there's so the much. Is, like the only, th this was a really, really like our prod team worked so hard uh, cause we well outnumbered the prod team. So it was impossible for them to hit all of our conversations and like night zero, um, like I met, I had mentioned earlier, I'd met Deb at a game a year before. And so seeing her on cast was like an amazing surprise. But I had also hit like a really cool early bonds with Charlie and German that I, I wish could have had a way of representing. But it's kind of hard because I was literally to make those bonds, pulling them into random bedrooms with no one in them to be like, hey, I want to work with you both. Um, during round one, I, I, I hope it's in the Patreon folder, maybe. But Oakley and I had a, a decent partnership in which during round one, we're like, we hold hands and we jump up and down in celebration that we're together and working together. Um, and so I was very happy that Oakley had a pendant because it meant that a, a, an ally from my perspective had control of the pendant and therefore could also then be a shield as well. Um, and so that was fun. Um, and then like, yeah, for me, what when that round one vote happened, like I just had happened to have more game conversations with Gluck in that moment in time than Tim, but those are collective over the course of like maybe late at night the night before, that morning over breakfast. Um, what I had fun though doing as well, and I, I love that I could say this to all three of you, um, I definitely noticed like in the morning before round one and a little bit late at night, the, the, the three of you getting like little conversations in. And so I was like, okay, I see recognition going on and I'm okay with that because if they know each other and I think all three are, I, th I thought all three are really friendly. It's like, maybe I could join them at some point later was sort of my thought of it. But y'all were not hidden at all about having conversations. I mean, I mean, specifically the breakfast morning, I think it took us forever to leave the patio after we eating breakfast together. And then the minute I walk out, I then totally see you all, okay, we're going to talk now here in the patio quietly. I'm like, <laughs> yep. We were not slick. It's funny because Tim said a very similar thing in our conversation yeah. with him earlier. He was like, yeah, night, like the very first night, um, I think even before like the morning. Uh, and he was like, yeah, I saw you and Sam and, and, and Josh all together, like um, like Duke, Sam and, and you all together. And, and I was like, oh, I should go over and like join that conversation. But I didn't want to. But I'm like, oh, man, that's two people now that clocked us having those conversations. <laughs> and I thought we were being so subtle about it. <laughs> I, mean, I was doing the same thing. Like uh, when I, um, for Charlie uh, to make clear to him that I wanted to work with him, we were playing the table tennis game. There was no cameras there at the time either. And for some reason, everyone was playing the downstairs games. So, but there was like maybe three other people with us in that moment. 
they start walking downstairs ahead of me. I notice Charlie's still upstairs. So I immediately double back, get away from the people I was walking out with and tell them, hey, you're amazing. I want to work with you. And then just kind of moved on from that point. So like we were all doing like those quick grabs of whoever we felt early vibes with to just sort of like mm -hmm. get a little bit of a head. So, um, so whether- I got one of those from Charlie too, actually. Um, I don't, I, yeah, I, I think maybe night zero or like the first morning I, I do it. Uh, yeah. I, I remember like that just, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I was very difficult in the first, like, like there was 19 players. So like how uh, to get like one, uh, a two on one or a one on one time was very, very brief. So if you got that magic of privacy for a minute, like you should jump on it because the game was going to move fast and you wanted to have like moves available. Mm -hmm. Play the game before the game plays you. That's what they say. Yeah, it's true. That's do you what have they any? Say. Do you have any like conversations you wish popped up in the first few rounds there, Duke? Or was most of what you were doing like in front of the cameras? I'm not gonna lie to you. I think most of what I was doing was in front of the cameras um, during those like off periods where either we were eating or trying to sleep. Um, I was really trying to just kind of like chill a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think Mike said it best. Like whenever you have that chance with, with like one-on-one -on -one with people, you would probably reach out and be like, yeah, we're cool. Or I want to work with you, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think most of what was captured on camera was accurate. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, we, um, for, for like for as much fun and like I, I i know obviously we're biased but like i just think we have an incredible cast but like that also like makes the job tough on production like what do you show what do you not show like how do you make a story out of all this like it's just wild that's been cool to um, watch the beginnings of that um the six person alliance whose name i know but i guess we're not going to get ahead of that um but uh the uh that it was formed via just like quick gestures that sky had just sort of been like i guess she, in, in the edit she referenced that for you sam that it was just like hey i heard from josh and sky's like yep nope we're good and i'm like wow yep. like I, that there was never a point of there was it's not like it was ever a room that there was a miss out opportunity in terms of jumping into it's just like mm -hmm. a few quick glances and whispers were just like we good we good we good we good and that's really cool yeah. yeah, we, we kind of had to because, there again, there was so many people there and we had six people that we wanted to all work together. And it's so hard to get six people in a room without anybody else just wandering in and being like, oh, I just saw all these six people going into a room together. Like, that's really suspicious. So we kind of had to do it through, like, word of mouth of, like, I talked to Sky, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go find Duke and I'm going to go find Sam. And she's like, okay, well, I'll find Bergen and Julia. And we kind of just did it, like through little whispers and chit chats, but I wish we could get everybody, we could have got everyone into a room because I think that would have been a lot better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, but when it's, um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> like, I feel like to my end, I was Cut. pretty good on a four person because uh, I felt like me, Debbie, German and Oakley had happened by that point, had enough conversation time that we wanted to work together. And so from my mental standpoint, I was trying to see if maybe Charlie could join that and then it'd be a five. Um, but that's probably why like in the game of it all, it's hard to take it. It's hard to take it badly when another group happens to grow faster. And so mm -hmm. six is bigger than four and five. So it's yeah. like, all right, yep, that's playing the game faster and that's cool. Mm -hmm. So, Josh, when you split, um, when you and Oakley split up the teams, did you have uh, black and blue? Like, what were the two colors that you like? You split your teams up into. I think I had green and blue. Green and blue. I had so... green for sure. I know I had green for sure. Um, actually, I can see. Let's see if I can find it. I had because blue had Lance, Maddie, Gluck, and Charlie. I had green and black. Green and black. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, how did you decide, like, when you're splitting up those two teams? 
Yeah. What that was the was, thought process there? That was crazy to me because I had a hard enough time picking one team. Like I was looking at the group of people and I'm like, there's 16 people sitting in front of me. And I was like, I have the six, I have some other alliances and other like, not alliances, but other like friendships and things that I'm forming. And um, I'm like, I got to make sure that people who I'm working with are on my team, but also we aren't all on the same team together. Cause if we lose and it's all the people that I'm working with, that's not good. So I try to like pick and choose like, okay, I'll take one person from an alliance or somebody I'm working with and then I'll take one person I'm not as close to and sort of went back and forth on that. And then when they were like, okay, now split that group in half, I was like, uh, and I needed like, I needed like a minute to think in, about it. And they were like, nope, you just got to go now. And so I just kind of tried to make it as even as possible um, in terms of like, okay, well now I want my, I still considered it one team. So I'm like, I want both of these teams to have the best chance of winning as they can. So I'm going to try to make it as even. So hopefully my two teams are the two teams that are in the top and are safe. Um, so I really was just trying to make it even and fair. Uh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, Mike and Duke, you two end up on the red team, like separated together. What What were your initial thoughts towards each other? Like, was it like, oh, good, Duke's here? Or was it like, Duke, you, you know, oh, Good, Mike. Oh, Mike God. is here, like Mike's somebody here. I can vote out, or like, <laughs> oh, good, he'll Mike will vote with me. Um, yeah, G good or bad. I think um, um, for I think for me, I mean, Mike and I had just been on the same team in the first round, so I thought we did well in that first challenge. So I was like, okay, let's try to run it back in in the second one. Um, yeah, I was I was happy to see Mike on my split up team. Same. No, like round one had just gone well. Um, I had ended night zero. Like I had made a bunch of notes about everybody in the house and where I stood. And like I ended, I remember ending that night feeling like I had made the least progress and therefore needed to do the most work for both Nia and for you, Duke. Just because we didn't get a lot of time night zero because it was a million, million people. So in round one, there was like a moment of privacy where I tell Duke, I know your podcast. I think you're great. And I, the, the, at that moment, I really wanted to work with Duke in some capacity. It was just a matter of like timing and stuff. So lucking out that we had the round one period and that neither of us were like on the chopping block and therefore could vote. I believe we voted together. I don't remember exactly what your but Duke was in round one. Um, but we could at least conversely collaboratively. Yeah, we voted together then. Um, so then going into round two, I was like, okay, cool. This It was a good group. Like, And, I've, and, I, and I already knew that I was... With the divide, like it was close with Deb, close with Oakley, close with German. So I largely felt like if we fell to elimination, that this block could ideally stay together. <laughs> um, the uh, things to get to later, but like, yeah, like ideally, it would it would be a strong block whether that we perform well together collaboratively in the challenge or if on elimination, stay together for the vote. Fair. And Sam and Duke, I was looking through, and you guys both were the anchor legs of your teams. It, was that, like, something you were expecting or wanted, or just something that ended up, like, you ended up being the question answerers for your teams? I, um, I honestly, like, if I had to pick an ideal um, place to be, it, it was there giving me like the least amount of information possible um was going to be like the where i was going to succeed the most um you know the earlier you go the more information that you're going to get and uh so and also i know that like i feel like i'm really good at context clues so um i think the one question where they ask um like a location based question um i don't believe that i got the answer to that in like the retelling, but I I know where like I just kind of was like, well, we're here. <laughs> I know it's Loyston Point Road, whatever. Um, so yeah, that definitely that like it helped um, me do well, even if I didn't have all the info. But like on top of that, my team just kind of like crushed it. They like did the math for me, so like I didn't get random numbers. I got like the answer by the time it funneled down to me. So yeah, it was a good spot to be in. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was definitely a, the same. I, this is this challenge is an ascendance staple. I think 
you guys both played the org, so I'm pretty sure this happened in the org. They do this in the in the org when the org was a thing. Yeah. So I've done it twice in the org, and I've actually seen it happen every season in the org. So I was like, I know that I want to be last because I cannot remember and transfer information well. Um, but the other thing that I was thinking about in terms of positioning was sometimes, I think they've done it in the live game, and I know they've done it in the org, the person that goes first, they'll temp them and be like, you know what, we'll leave out some information if you know, and we'll give you a power if, if we leave out a, par a part of the story. So I was like, eh. But it was very early on, so I was like, I'm just gonna try to get the position that I think I can do the best in at this point. So I was like, let me go last and answer the questions. Fair enough. Yeah, I if I say I didn't get to compete, which I was like kind of both glad and kind of sad because every time I think I've played this in an org, I've won the challenge, um, and I usually go first because I have a fairly decent memory. Uh, so, Mike, for you, was that something that you wanted? Or no. were you kind of just thrust in? Like, because I would have volunteered. I said, because no more, nobody, wow, try that again. Normally, nobody wants to go first. And I usually feel like confident in my memory skills. So, like, is that something that you did or you just got placed there? Round two to me was still all about avoiding conflict. So, Debbie was, I remember, fourth right about second. German took third. Duke took fourth. And I'm like, well, the only spot left is first. And, I, I knew um, half and half. So I'm a, rep a reporter by trade. And so I do interviews all the time. But I do it with a voice recorder all the time. And I was like, right, you know what? I usually do take little notes alongside my voice recordings to tell me where to go. So let's give yourself a little more credit here. Um, but I also, again, knew that this was going to be a challenge that was not going to do well for me, no matter what I was placed in, because memory is not my world. Um, so I was like, you know what? No one wants first. If they had offered a power, I would have taken that. <laughs> like, no question, because I kind of knew this team is going to elimination. This is awful at this point, <laughs> but we're going to try. And as we're going, if I, if I could skip ahead a smidge to, like, when we're hearing the story... Um, I start like trying to make a little song out of it. I'm bouncing and I'm bouncing a little bit physically. It's hard. To, it, it, it would, it would you have to be looking at me on camera to tell that I'm bouncing physically, but I'm bouncing physically to create a rhythm to try to memorize the story. Um, but then some of it, as it came out later, I think just got rewritten by other memories. Um, for instance, we were told, uh, I guess it was the Golden Girls restaurant was the place. But I really thought it was the Blue Point Mexican restaurant. I know where that came from. Blue Point Brewery is my hometown brewery in Patchog, and I was just there two hours ago with friends. And uh, that somehow snuck in because I must have really wanted a beer at that moment in time. I think I uh, answered that. And, and that <laughs> made the whole way through. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I do remember standing there with Oakley and like, listening to that story and i'm like i'm so glad i'm not playing because they normally the stories when they do this kind of challenge aren't that detailed and aren't that long and i just remember standing there like if i had to be in this challenge i would have forgotten so many things so like still kudos yeah. to you for remembering as much as you did i also watched it. it one time i watched season two so i didn't really realize that math was a regular portion of this because i have no visibility to the org of ascendance and at that point i i, I don't remember if it was played in two three and four but I'd only watched at that moment it being played in two. So there's definitely like elements that if I were aware math was gonna be part of that challenge, I just would have then remembered the numbers and then done the math of how many people were in the store and on the tables. But I thought like only thing important is the amount, which I also get wrong because I think it was like 144 and I passed it on as 544, but oh well. Um I know that they always do this competition because they love the shot of the um, the people in the background when they've told the story and mm -hmm. like somebody's fucking it up and the people in the background are like, yeah. <laughs> no, actually, when I was rewatching the episode, I ended up and like, oh, I will insert them like somewhere here. Uh, but I actually took screenshots, screen grabs of like every because everybody's just like stressed. They're just like. Like <laughs> going That's through not it. What I said. That's not what I said. <laughs> All three times. Yeah, no, it's so good. 
someone in the live chat of our episode was like, Duke, what was wrong with your answer? And I immediately write in, no, it's my fault. It's not Duke's F up. It's my fault. Um, I thought it was uh, interesting. So I didn't realize that you guys all received the story at the same time. Was that where you guys received it upstairs and then you had to like hear it and then walk downstairs? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. It seemed like that, that would be more difficult. Yeah, it was it was interesting standing there like with Oakley watching because I'm like they're just and I think they only did it once. Like normally they repeat like I recall in other challenges you get the story more than once as the first person to go. But they're like we're doing it once and they just went and like Papa was reading it slow enough but he also it just was coming at you so quickly. Like I just remember standing there being like he's reading this story so fast and like wasn't quite pausing his emphasis on some of the like um like the words and things like normally when you get these stories they emphasize points that are going to be important to remember he just kind of went through it and i was like oh god these people are going to have Papa. so much trouble <laughs> so i was trying to like go back a minute during him reading to put into like a pneumatic device what he had said so much more the story goes by. So like I still don't remember what Eric McHenry roles Eric McHenry's role in the story is in any capacity. Um and everybody else is like sort of screwed up. Like I definitely like in discovering that the Billy Stevens role was not an interpretive dance. I, I it's it's absolutely killed me. And I saw Billy over the summer at a survivor game we we're both prodding. I considered asking him to do an interpretive dance on video just to be like, see he did one. But yeah, no. I'm back. Like, Sorry, on my audio yeah, that, decided like, to be annoying, but Billy Stevens interpretive dance. That makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, I could see it. I could see it. Um, so what's like the reaction from you guys like when you get the results? Like did you think like did you have a sense of how well or poorly you did as the questions were being asked? Or like you you still didn't know like how many you had right, how many you had wrong? I thought we killed it. I thought we had like five or six. It seemed like um, the, the squad felt good about it. So I, I was like, I felt good about it. Um, yeah. I don't know what, Mike, did you feel good about it? I felt good for four. I felt <laughs> until the math came out, then I was like, oh no, oh no. But I did, I thought enough of the facts were like the, the Jackbox question carried through, um, the prod question carried through. Um, and I thought like the other middle details we were in range for. Um, and, and then it, it also helped that when last place was announced initially as green team and Sky's like, yeah, I'm like, oh, thank gosh, they really effed up. Then, then maybe we'd be clenched second place. That'd be great. <laughs> Did they did they did they show how many questions they asked? I don't I don't remember how many it was a total. There were seven. seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five, yeah, five out of seven was the top score. Which was the black team. Um me, AJ, uh, Nia, and Dave. How did you guys do it so well? What's the secret? I, I it, just one of those things that I think everybody, you know, luck is a big part of it. It's just the, whatever got transferred just got transferred correctly. And I don't Jealous. know. <laughs> transferred with like the right like thought through it. So if you just had the answers, that's amazing. And then watching um, the second place team think through everything um, was also like, I felt like they did such an, I mean, yeah, second. But also, like they did, they really did a great job with finding ways to communicate to each other the back and forth. Um, I do remember, like, on our team, there was a moment in which, given this was wrong information, but I, since I was, I swore on it being an interpretive dance for Billy, that Debbie had changed it to intrepid, and then it, it goes to German as intrepid, but then German gets it to Duke as interpretive. I'm like, yes, we saved the word. <laughs> It turned out to be the wrong word, but we, I was like, yes, we, we got back somehow. <laughs> uh, so funny. Um, yeah, so I guess once um, we figure out, we hear that 
Wait, I don't know. You you guys were just talking about this, but was it two teams that were safe and two teams yeah. that were going together? Yeah, it was the red and the green teams that end up going uh, yeah. to elimination okay. together. So when um, in the episode, when it cuts to the strategy portion, um, the first scene that we see is every like everybody's in the Coliseum. It's just mm -hmm. full. Everybody's crammed in there, um, except for maybe one or two people. I'm not sure. Um, but what were you were either of you in the Coliseum at that point? Like what what was like? your uh, where was your headspace going into this strategy um did, were you going in with a plan to to yeah i guess out. just want to hear from both of you <laughs> it's just um so early. yeah um, you, go ahead Mike. you go first it was still early and so the hope was that someone else would say something and something i loved about both rounds that um i think for, i think it was, oh no it's definitely round one i forget if it was round two mm -hmm. Um, so, because Nia was safe, but Nia had this amazing talent of making a declarative statement in strategy sessions with no information whatsoever, and it counted as participation. <laughs> and so, I later joke about this with Nia. I'm like, "You're so good at participating and giving nothing at the same time, and how you do it." Um, I a really good way to describe that. Yeah, like an admiration uh, of of that strategy. Um, yeah, Duke, Duke, were you in the Coliseum room too, like the very beginning, or was you, were you in a small room to start? I think I tried to get into this. I wasn't in the Coliseum in the beginning because I, I did go to the Coliseum in round one, mm -hmm. and I think everybody likes to go to that room first, and um, it's kind of nothing really gets done, right? Because there's so many people there, and not everybody's going to say everything in front of like so many people. So I was like, let me try to go into a smaller group somewhere. So I, I missed out on the on the initial large group there. Well, I was gonna say I I've, I have the episode up, so I'm like kind of scrolling through, and there is a there is a scene. I think it's like the first scene, and there's like Maddie, Duke, Julia, German, Debbie, me, Mike, Oakley, Lance, like all in the Coliseum room, and I'm or yeah, and it's like that's nine people, and I think eight of those nine people are voting in that round, and I'm like that's eight of the ten people all voting. All and that was, I remember that frustrated me so much at the beginning mm -hmm. because it was like, we're all here. We cannot have productive strategy conversations if we are all in the same room at the same time because everybody just kind of stood there, like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, so I, I remember leaving so many times. I was like, nope, I can't do it. I can't do it. There's too many people. Yeah, I remember from my end. Um, so I, I do remember with the 10 people up for elimination, oh, I'm sorry, 10 people going to the vote, eight for elimination. I, I was paranoid from the, from the jump because I had already known that of the group, if you took LRG and ORG experience into account, I was the newest. And so I felt like an easy vote. I, I might not have been the easy vote but at, at that moment, but that was what my head was telling me. And so that motivates me to like, well, we're gonna pick a target and we're gonna float it and hope that other people carry it. And in this moment, um, in addition to like German and Deb and Oakley, I felt via like dialogue and conversations, even though there had never been game talk good with like Sky, Julia and Josh. So I remember like an earlier room that's not on camera. There's two, there are two rooms in which I float Bergen's name um, citing the math problem as a reason for him being a threat. Lovely man, obviously, but we need to find something. So I decide, hey, he solved the math problem that's kind of threatening. What do you, what would you think? Uh, even though I feel so bad saying this. And I remember Sky being like, nah, the math is not a reason to consider him. And uh, similar sentiments from other people. And then the room just dividing in half and running out the door. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> Come on the block. That's what happened just now. <laughs> like, so it was just a, like a novice move to think that in a room of, I, I think it was six people, that that would be an okay idea. Um, I'm glad they have in the edit me saying the same thing in a much smaller room with, I think it's Gluck, Corian, uh, the third person in that room I'm forgetting right now. Um, but I definitely learned that size or smaller is where you maybe begin such seeds, not in a larger setting. Um, 
it also just could have been the name that you said, um, Mike. I, you know, I think in the early rounds, I feel like people were wanting people to say a name just because they didn't want to push a name. So I think it would have been comforting. Um, I just think you picked the wrong name there because I think he's at that point in a majority alliance and it, obviously Sky is in that same alliance. So she didn't want to do it. But that's funny that yeah, like, everybody leaves. There's no way like, of oh, knowing fuck. you're so well protected at that moment. And so yeah. it's just really bad timing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, and then it ends up the thing, though, is like it organically like ends up like Corian's name comes out, which I remember hearing very late into the strategy session time. And like it, it still ended up being like such a close vote at the end of the day, which I remember really like I thought and this was like a real wake up call for me. I was like, I know exactly where everyone's voting. I know exactly what's happening. And then like, I almost was in the minority vote. And it was like, just a complete shock, which again, speaks to the fact that you can't really know where everybody's, wh what everybody's truth is. You know what I mean? Like people are just telling you what they need to in order to like make what they're doing happen. So mm -hmm. it definitely was a lot of like, we only had like 15 minutes to get this all done. And it, it, you really, kind of can feel that in the episodes, but still it's like, it looks like you had way more time to do all of this strategizing. Mm -hmm. I will say one person, um, in, well, Bergen in a confessional, I, I don't know if this was like the voting confessional or just like, I'm pretty sure it was in the voting confessional. Cause like, I, I remember watching it thinking like, there's no way, like this wasn't like retcon. Like he just knew in the moment he said, um, I'm pretty sure the, it's uh, Debbie, Mike, and Corey in getting votes um, as he's explaining why he's voting the way that he's voting. And so it was really interesting to see that, um, you know, for myself, it's not a vote that I'm a part of. So, you know, it makes sense for me to like not kind of be in the know and like what's going on. But in other votes that, you know, the previous vote would like say that I did vote in, I it's so hard to know if you're right in your assumptions and, and all and all of that. So it was kind of cool to see. I was like, only someone someone knows what's going on. <laughs> it was really affirming actually to watch people say that there was pushback against me for a while, which further uh, I'll introduce the moment that I decide to turn on Duke. Um, the uh, further makes it even more infuriating and, and idiotic. Like that is very much like, a mistake on all levels um the uh because it didn't help in any way whatsoever i had in that moment was in that afternoon building a relationship with duke so i didn't want to, to destroy that um but in my mind at that moment uh while spiraling i'm like votes are heading to debbie and i and we need to like just split these votes up and while i wasn't targeting duke in that my thought was if i could get the green team distracted and split the votes among multiple targets then if there's a coordinated vote among red, then that would prevail over a split green. Again, not knowing that green was also an alliance, mostly put together apart from, Corian was the only member of green, if I remember right, that wasn't part of um, the six person alliance. I um, believe so, yeah. And yeah. so I yeah. think that's yeah. how- so, Yeah, it was Julia, Sky, and- Bergen. Bergen, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so my thought incorrectly was like, let's put up more targets and make this round even messier. And perhaps that would allow a prevailing thought. But I feel like that messiness on top of existing messiness of the round is was, was unnecessary, basically. And like, especially once we get to the end and like it's brought up in the vote that like, like according to the confessionals, Josh, you're the one who just chooses between Corian and I and decides Mike is less useful in my game. So let's have the alliance go in this direction. And so one thing I'd wanted to ask in your direction was what lost that? Yeah. I mean, and it's so hard to remember, like even from the actual game playing out and then recording the confessionals and then all that, like so much changes. And so like, even trying to think back, I think it just was to me, I was trying to keep, like people were already starting the conversation of I was starting to become a target, like even that early on. And so I was like, one, I've had 
we had good personal conversations. Like we were in the shuttle together on the way to the to the game and we had sort of had that relationship forming. But in terms of like actual game level conversations, I feel like Corian to me had more potential, not just in terms of a game player, but just the way my game was heading. Like I could sort of see that as a direction forward, but I was trying to keep as many doors open as I could. And so the it was the perspective of Mike's the only name I'm really hearing. And then Corian's name came up very late and I had to just make a snap, sort of a snap decision. And it really felt to me like Corian and I were dancing around each other. Like, we really like each other. We really want to work together. Um, and so that for me, I was like, I just kind of have to make a choice, right? So there wasn't really a, there wasn't anything that really influenced that decision other than a lot was happening. We had no time to make decisions. I had to try to figure out what was going on with my game. And I thought more people were voting your way than Corian's way, if that makes sense. But again, it's mostly just trying to like remember that far back because so much happened. Yeah. But like it was never anything personal. I try never to do anything personal. It just was all like, what is the best game decision? Especially like who I was aligned with, where my allies wanted to vote, um, who I was trusting, that kind of thing. Yeah, no, especially once we learn like later the alliances and such, it's like, oh, this was one million percent game. And mm -hmm. in that moment, it's hard to, to perceive that in those moments because it, it literally in the moment of that time, I'm like, because I don't know who voted where, I'm like, yeah, the Duke move was dumb, which was dumb, but not fatal somehow. Thank goodness. Because <laughs> um, in that moment, Bergen, so, so Duke, what I would actually ask on your end, because you're in the six, but you ultimately don't vote with the six. And was it because like your last communication was with Bergen to vote for Corian? For me, the this vote was um, the person that I was talking to the most um, was Oakley at this vote, and Oakley seemed to be the one that was really pushing hard to vote out Corian. I thought he was making really good points to me, at least. Um, you know, Corian was, and I think Corian at this point is really likable and he's also very physical. Um, so I was like, Oakley's making some great points here. Um, I think taking out Corian early right now would be beneficial. Um, your name was out there too, Mike, but I was, I don't know if we had made a pact with our team prior. I know we did it in the first round, but um, I'm not sure if we did it in the second round, but I was like, I've worked with Mike a couple of rounds. So, I mean, I feel like we're fine. Um, and then I, I was never going to vote Bergen, obviously, just because, you know, he was in this alliance that was made, um, that I was a part of. So I was like, I'm hearing enough people voting for, for Bergen here. So I, I think it's the smart move or for, um, Corian. So I think it's the smart move, but yeah, Ber I, I did think that Bergen was also going to vote for uh, Corian in, in this vote, which is why I was a little blindsided by the, the, what happened. I mean, to be fair, if I had known that you and Bergen were going towards Corian, I probably would have voted with the majority, like with the alliance and the majority, but I don't think that ever came up in terms of like who was actually voting for Corian. Cause I didn't think, like I heard his name come up, but I had to have conversations with Bergen and Sky and we're like, we're not doing Corian. Like it just was a hundred percent. He was like, no, I'm not voting Corian. And so it was like, yeah, it's just interesting to see in hindsight. I'm like, it could have it could have gone a totally different way. <laughs> the final mm -hmm. three minutes of that session were just such a scramble too. Like, um, everyone was trying to tag everybody. Like, uh, one of the unseen moments for me was grabbing Julia at the end because I realized I never had one-on-one -on -one time with Julia in this game, even though she and I had met um, at a prior game and like had wanted to work together. But the minute we get into a room and the conversation begins, the timer goes off. And so she she actually she, no, she asks she gets a question in. She says, Mike, long term, what are your plans and what are you thinking? And then that's when the timer goes off and I can't answer the question because of the rules. So I just give her a giant hug and say, please vote Corian, please. And I, I love Corian. Corian is also like an adult Power Rangers fan, like I am, and like we bonded so hard. So like having to be in a position of going with Corian as a name was really made me feel bad, but it, it, this cast was so much fun that like any name coming up was still going to be painful no matter what. There was no one that felt like an easy vote. Except for Matthew Papa. 
Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if, we could have, if we could have, I would have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be that would be a satisfying one for some reason. <laughs> for for like all of the all of the torture that they put us through that we, you know, willingly signed up for, mind you. Um, you know, just give a little back. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we, um, we'll start to wrap this up here. Um, but like, before we do, is there, um, like anything else that like kind of sticks out just from, from this round, um, that we haven't covered on yet that you want to talk about? I mean, I, I'll go briefly into my elimination speech because this is my first LRG where I yeah. hadn't rehearsed one before because um, I, I love all the pageantry that are reality shows. So like in the past, I usually fully rehearse um, my eviction before it happens. And it, it bites me in the butt in my second game because I end up giving to give that eviction preference to everybody. But um, in my very first one, I only had to give it to like eight other people. So that was fine. Um, so more so as votes are being read, my head's going, what are you going to say? But also, I'm pretty sure a battle back is happening. So you can't be too inflammatory. Because if you go all through all the trouble of winning a battle back just to get voted out, that's not great. Um, so in my mind, I'm like, all right, if you end up coming up peaceful, only peace. Um, but also, like, maybe try to make people miss you. Maybe. Like, I, it might not have worked. But, like, um, so I remember, like, when it comes up, the 4-4 four, four tie, um, fifth vote me, I I think I take a, an extra second and I'm kind of sad in that moment, like, authentically sad, but I also want to give a camera moment. And then I get up and stand in the center and attempt to say, I don't know how how. Even with, we don't have microphones when we do this, so I don't know how, what came out in the room, but was turning to the people who voted and said namaste to mean peace, because game, then turn to everyone who didn't vote and say, I gave you all that I could, and then walk out. Because I don't really believe in giving hugs after getting voted out, although Tim was very nice about giving all, us all a hug. Um, <laughs> and the objective was, one, it's a game. Um, but also to be swift and hope that if I can win win my way back, people would be interested in reconnecting with me, was the hope and intention. Um, and it was nice to like not have stage fright going into an eviction, because that's also what happened when I had one, like a, a whole monologue pre-planned. Um, but uh, no, it was just more like, no, just get me out of there, get my water bottle and notebook out of the kitchen um, and into the arms of Matthew Shedd, who gives him amazing elimination hugs. <laughs> I, I'm glad you you mentioned that actually, Namaste, because I I you say you say something, but I I couldn't catch what it was, um, and yeah, that that that's such a that that is such a good note to go out on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, at the end of the day, we're all paying. We all pay to be here. We're all like there for like. For fun, it, it, it's it's weird to call this torture fun, but it is fun for us. So <laughs> it's like I don't again. I don't believe That's in full blown hugs, <laughs> like when after being voted out. But like respect is what we all want to give to each other ultimately. All right. Well, we'll um, we'll call it here. I feel like I don't know. I I enjoy just talking to all of you so much. Like. We could just chit chat about this forever. Um, we will continue to chit chat about this. Um, we are at, at, at the time that we're recording this episode four is currently out there into the world, but um, we'll be caught up soon and doing this uh, hopefully every week. Um, but in the meantime, please make sure to, um, if you haven't uh, liked or subscribed, liked the um, episodes on the Ascendance channel uh, or subscribe to their channel, please um, head on over there and interact with uh, with the videos and everything. It helps us out so much. If you're ever interested in playing Ascendance live or just Ascendance, the LRG yourself, um, 
you know, getting the word out there about it as much as possible um, is uh, is the key to do that because who knows if we're going to see uh, season six. So, um, and also like and subscribe to, you know, our, our cute little home here, uh, Lost at Sea. And I'm going to stop rambling. Um, I'm going to pass it off to you, Josh, if there's anything that you uh, want to add in closing. Yeah, I just gonna say like thanks Duke and Mike for joining us and taking some time out of your evenings to to chit chat with us about the episode. And um, I mean, we haven't stipulated, you know, the the boundaries between coming back and talking about more episodes. So hopefully we'll see both of you again um, on our little recap, uh, you know, podcast, whatever we're calling this here. So, but we do appreciate the time. It's always great to see. Um, each other again and yeah let's let's try to get some support behind ascendance because i'm sure that there are some uh you know like mike in, in present company who would like a second chance maybe one day at at the ascendance game so uh but yeah we'll we'll uh, catch you on the next one i guess thank you all so much it's so much fun bye